Welcome to the Wicked Radio Network. Hi, this is Mark. Congratulations, you have found this amazingly awesome show. Chances are you're listening to it right now on whether it's iTunes or Stitcher Radio or some other mobile app that allows you to stream this amazingly awesome show to your ear holes. And I can't stress how awesomely amazing the show really is. But did you know that you can also catch the latest episode of this show on the Tangibound Network? That's right. Go check out tangiboundnetwork.com. You can look them up and you can listen to it right there. It's even mobile friendly. What more could you ask for? Which means you can pull it up on your iPhone or your Android, even your Windows phone. Yeah, who has one of those? But still, point remains, you can do it. You can do it. Check it out. TangiboundNetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. Check it out. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network. Welcome to the podcast from Temperance Town. The sexiest podcast of world renowned. Tony grows a beard to hide his chin. Swaps it with Earl so it glistens. Salty, salty language. Kings of the sexy frontier. Download the pod, you won't get enough of these dapper chaps talking deadly fluff. In Hobo Gulch, they run a homeless mission, clanging and banging with the pentagram of kittens. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. They enjoy their whiskey and local craft beer. By Odin's unkempt pubis, we give a cheer. Tommy's a raccoon when he's booziest. Don't be a savage, be an enthusiast. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. On the frozen tundra, they call it a lock. Tony likes to masturbate in a sock. Brian pisses rocks cause it feels so great I still don't know who the fuck is Tate Salty, salty language Kings of the sexy frontier The boys will let you know when there's a Due to male pattern baldness They don't wear curlers Stay salty people, that's their closing line And don't forget Have a beer, you'll be fine Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Salty, salty language, kings of the sexy frontier. Salty. Hey, enthusiasts, what's happening? This is Salty Language, episode 265. Uh, dare I say the moistest podcast on the network. At least me. I'm mo- awfully moist right now. Wow, moist, huh? Yeah. Not in a sexy way, either. Like sweating like Danzig over there, or what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh. I wish I had my mesh shirt on. <laughs> you don't? I know, right? Pretty disappointed. What a douche I am. <laughs> Although, I will say, if uh, we started recording and you, know, you turn the video on and I see you in a mesh shirt... There's going to be some questions asked. You know? Oh, it's true. But I always feel like doing my dancing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Although, I, does a mesh shirt, now that I'm thinking about it, does that counteract the leather pants? Uh, you mean like, because leather pants are considered cool, so if you wear a mesh shirt with leather pants, does that do they neutralize each other? Well, no, no, I mean like, because leather pants have... You know, contain the heat. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like yeah. you got some raging ball heat going. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Does the mesh shirt kind of, you know, help alleviate said ball heat? I don't think so because it's, you know, the ball heat tends to stay there. That's you know? true. It's not like a lot of other heat, you know, like if your head gets hot, you can, you know, it's one of those areas where you kind of, it's, you know, pretty well contained there if it's covered. So 
I think your your torso kind of allows things to move around a little bit, but your groin just is built to trap things. Especially so. when it's locked in a sexy leather. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just having horrific uh, flashes of gifts from IT crowd of, um, oh, I can't think of his name now, uh, Matthew Barry's character, at, you know, the boss at, right. toward the end of the, the show. Um, just doing his, um, do you remember the episode where he does the, um, the working out where he's in like the pink shorty shorts Oh, and yes, he's doing I the do. like rubbing around and then thrusting, <laughs> uh, God. it's one of my favorite gifts to use because sensual, but well, boy, is it, I'm getting all <laughs> hot and bothered thinking about it. I bet. I bet. Yeah. If so you, I'm sure our listening audiences as well, if you weren't moist enough. Yeah. If you want to double down on moistness. I don't think <laughs> – that is the worst selling line, I think, in advertising. Like anytime – if you brought that up in a meeting, almost every time you're going to be like, nope. The only time maybe it would be like if KY was using it or something. Right. But if like the Gushers Fruit Snack Corporation, like we need a catchphrase, boys. <laughs> Wait. You're going to double down on moistness. Yeah. And You're just fired. Every, yeah, just immediately the boss just points to the door and, and, while calling security. The, the floor opens up like yeah. it's Dr. Evil's lair. Yes. They they don't even let you clear your desk. You're just yeah. right out. In fact, they might just pitch you out a window. You know? Oh, definitely. You know, that's what security sure. does. <laughs> they show up. You think they're going to escort you out. And they just pitch you right out a window. Yeah, hoist. Yeah. <laughs> Just like your, uh, you know, jazz on Fresh Prince, Uncle Phil's, just, he just Uncle Phil's you out the front door, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's just 40 stories up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, details. Yeah, but then they just put out the press release, another superior, or superior, ugh, another super depressed executive at the Gushers Corporation. <laughs> right. Yeah, and they hope that that idea dies with them, but right. it never does. It's just somehow it carries on. Also, side note, Gusher Corps? Great porn name. <laughs> true, true. I, I, I guess yeah. if you're selling a porn, doubling down on moistness might might be okay. Well, that could be. See, now it doesn't work as a like key selling phrase for gushers of fruit snack, right? But if you're filming gusher core, yes, that's that's a sweet line in the movie. It sure is. Double down on moistness <laughs> as they're like going into the jungle because it's a gusher core. Some sure. picture, something military based. Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, I see. Core is in C O R P S. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Yep. The gusher core. I was thinking core is in like you know the core of your body or like, the core of the earth. Like they're going in to free some POWs, but I'm just like fucking all the bitches in the village. Well, obviously. Because gusher core. Well, you have to create a distraction. It's true. <laughs> One Good big point. orgy while the other person goes and rescues yeah, the person. I agree. <laughs> what a great diversion. Right? Yeah. Like, all right, we got to have that sex in a punji pit scene. Come well, on, boys. Uh, punji pit just seems like a terrible, terrible name for uh, anything in porn. <laughs> it's an actress's name. <laughs> Pungy Pit. Ugh. Pungy Pit. <laughs> Ugh, that's just, yeah, she's the one no one wants to work. Well, not no one. She's very niche, you know? <laughs> like, right. she's got her audience, but yeah. Ugh, that's terrible. Like, all right, Mac Truck. That's the guy's name. Sure. <laughs> you have a scene of Pungy Pit. He's like, oh, God. Again? Why do I always get paired with her? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's just gross, Tony. What the gusher core? No, that's fine. The punji oh. pit. It just. I kind of want to see a GI Joe line of them. You remember they would always have like tiger core, or whatever, <laughs> yeah. and everyone have tiger stripes on them for mm -hmm. some reason. Right. <laughs> well, it makes you harder to see <laughs> during it's combat. True. Yeah, like if you're, uh, it was the one group, like when Duke was going to go stalk the, you know, the grasslands of India. Right. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Him, him and Bazooka in the, uh, vehicle. I can't think of the name of the vehicle though, and I'm killing myself because I can't think of it. But they're in like, what was it, a Wildcat or something like that. And they had like tiger stripes down the side of it because again, you know, blending in. <laughs> yeah. When Roadblock wants to jack a Chinese woman in a park. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, this is the weirdest G.I. Joe. I don't know. I don't, I don't think. What the, 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 the tiger ones or the gusher core? <laughs> mm, yeah, good point. Actually, it might just be the the tiger force. 
Because I'm, I'm picturing all the G.I. Joe Gusher core accessories that are all dick related, I can only say. Well, obviously. <laughs> I mean, Snake Eyes got dual, you know, dick swords. <laughs> the worst part about him is he's silent while he's doing all of it. You know? It's just it's creepy. Oh, it's just, it's the weirdest 15 minutes in the movie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The whole time she's like, "Am I doing something wrong? He's not making any yeah. noise. <laughs> like he's not even grunting. It's like, just, not, you must not be into this. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, just nothing. He's just whatever. Oh man, <laughs> my favorite is you know like chuckles because he leaves his shirt on. You know, well, of course, yeah, he leaves his Hawaiian shirt on while he's doing it. <laughs> exactly. Maybe unbuttons a couple buttons. Yeah, maybe. So maybe. you show off that sick gold he's wearing. Oh no, it's so he can touch his own nipples. <laughs> 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 Go if it gets him off. Anyway. Right, yeah. He's just seen too much in the business. Yeah, he's hitting it, but he's got to yeah. have both hands on his own exactly. shit. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to get nursed like a new mom, really. <laughs> yeah, his Hawaiian shirt has nursing flaps. <laughs> yeah, those aren't pockets, baby. Not at all. Like, <laughs> ha, fooled you. <laughs> he just Velcros him down. <laughs> what a horrible Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> It's true. I guess, I, I guess, love, really, if you're wearing that, you are ready for any party, I think. Well, true, because you can yeah. tuck it in and be, like, dressed casual. T- you could cinch it off, you know? Cinch it off, yeah. Look right, sexy, that, right? Show a little midriff. Exactly. They expose them Hershey Kiss nips. And it's on. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's what life's all about, you know? Fucking well, plus, sometimes, sometimes you get hot, you know? So you let a little breeze in, you know? Yeah, ventilate. Sure. <laughs> that's, what they're, that's what I thought they were there for. Yeah, definitely. No? All right. Absolutely. That's what he calls it, ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, every time you look over, he's, eh, you know. Yeah, just rubbing away. Just uh. working him. Yeah. Working him. Like, they look like runner's nipples from all the work he's oh. giving him. <laughs> just like, like, dude, come on. Like, chuckles. You're bleeding. <laughs> Cut it out, man. It's the way. It's the only way I know how to feel things. <laughs> <laughs> Like I've seen shit. <laughs> like seen shit, nothing. You used to run a shoe carnival. That's how you got your nickname. <laughs> Fucking shoe carnival. <laughs> uh, uh, Steve chuckles to the front. We have a return. <laughs> Steve chuckles. Steve chuckles. No, no, front. he's the guy. At, like, cause you know, shoe carnival. Like, uh, cause I, I got uh, i interviewed and was accepted for the job of this like their managers are up in like their little they have like a manager tower basically looks like a dj booth it does and then they yeah. they're supposed to be jazz up the crowd that's in the store like they're supposed to be upbeat while they're reading um uh copy and then they also run like the game where you you know spin the wheel and stuff or whatever it is so oh man that sounds like an awful job that's why i didn't take it because <laughs> i, I thought about... long and hard about it and was like no now we know what shit Steve Chuckles has seen yeah. in his career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's probably praying for the day someone walked in there with a Molotov and lobbed it into his <laughs> DJ booth. Right when when uh, uh, Duke walked in and was like, "Like you look like you'd be a good soldier." <laughs> but you know, first Duke sees the spinny wheel of fate, mm-hmm. and every category is just a different method of suicide. And he's about <laughs> ready to spin it. <laughs> That's horrible, but accurate. come on over, guys. Let's see what I win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see what I win. <laughs> That's when people walk up and they're like, "This doesn't look very fun." But like, ah, oh, trust me, it is. <laughs> and, or like, they, ah, you've been in this DJ booth as long as I have. You know what a gun right. barrel tastes like. <laughs> just all of them just say bottle of pills. <laughs> There's like one that says like uh, free shoes, and the rest say. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that way if it hits free shoes, whoever gets free shoes, you know. But otherwise, bottle of pills for ch- for old chuckles. Bottle of pills. Oh man, yeah, because he was the most he's the most serious guy that's ever worked that job. That's why they Indeed. called him Chuckles, you know, because the irony, yeah. like calling a fat guy tiny, you know. Exactly. Perfect. Oh my god. So uh, if this is your first time listening, uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Brian. Right. And joining oh. me is Tony. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's what we do here. Yeah, we start at Fruit Snacks and go to G.I. Joe. and Or actually, what's Fruit Snacks, Porn, G.I. Joe, Shoe Carnival Suicide. Yeah, it got it got pretty dark there twice. So It did. Yeah. It did. That's all right. Oh, Pungy Pit. I can't forget Pungy oh, Pit. Oh, yeah, you can't. I already that's wrote like, it. That's like my favorite highlight. Well, Pungy Pit right now is the show title, so... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll we'll see how the night goes, but you know, right now that's, that's the title. Uh, yeah, there, there's, uh, you know, as of right now, there'll be no, uh, vote. Uh, speaking of, if you listened and you voted on last week's, uh, show title, thank you. Um, that was cool because, you know, we had two titles that we, we really loved. So, uh. It was a real Sophie's Choice moment. It was. It was. I, yeah. I think, I think the public picked correctly, though. The more I thought so about it, bourbon fingering just kept standing out to me. So. And it yeah. felt, it felt very much, you know, and it's a nice, when you read them in order, we have, uh, vag- uh vaginal tingles, bourbon fingering. Oh, so. It kind of works well. Right. And well. now, punji pit, because that's probably what would happen after the bourbon fingering. That's true. <laughs> You're going to want to clean yourself because you shouldn't be yep. putting bourbon in there anyway. So only you've got a bunch of steaks in you. Steaks as in meat or like. As in bamboo spikes covered in human feces. <laughs> uh, wow. That sounds awful. Right? Yeah. That does not sound like a good time for anybody. No. Uh, that's why Max Truck, or whatever I called him, was so upset. <laughs> Mac Truck. Actually, Mac Mac Truck. Yeah, Mac Truck. Ma- Max Truck's his brother, though. <laughs> he does everything extreme, or to the max, as he says. Well, you know, of course. Well, of instead course. of saying balls deep, he says to the max. <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. yeah. He even has it tattooed right above his dick. <laughs> yeah, it's Exactly. Because it, every scene or something, like, she's like, Oh, put it in my ass. And he's like, I'm going to. To the max. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he just has he just has Max tattooed right above the his his shaft. That way right. when he's you know, like to the max. Oh, anyway, enough of that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, if this right. is your first show, uh, I'm sure it'll be your last. So I'm sorry, see <laughs> so you go. Yeah, well thanks for listening this long. Uh yeah. It probably gets better. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Oh man. So before we get into the weeks, uh, do you get any business? Um, business. Mm-hmm. <coughs> ah, right. sorry. That's that's handsome. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, well, I don't know what sort of business you want to get into exactly because we have fellow podcaster business. Okay. I, I we have, have business a- involving our own little universe of podcasts, kinda. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Like, like, let's say, for instance, Brian, we want to talk about the enthusiasts, which you might know as people besides the Beer Fest episode. It's been a while. It's because yeah. we're taking a tiny enthusiast hiatus. Right. But there will be fresh interviews coming soon. Yeah, yeah. We're really hoping to get Max Truck. <laughs> to the Max. <laughs> to the Max. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, that's his one requirement for the show. And that's the problem for our, on our end. We're like, eh, maybe not. So, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that'll be nice to have some, some new enthusiasts for, for the children's to, uh, listen to while they're eating their peanut butter and jelly at lunchtime. Yeah, pulling up their squares of carpet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Listen to them awesome people talking about awesome dick jokes. Yep, that's right. That's what we do. Gather around, children's. I'm going to play the, the new Salty Language episode. <laughs> <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's this one called? Pungy Pit. <laughs> then they have to explain. Everything. It's, yeah. it's all right, though. It's a learning experience. It's fine. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we well, want our children to talk like adults at some point. That's right. When they're like five. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's do this then. Let me get my business out of the way real quick because mine will go by probably for pretty quick here. First of all, uh, if you haven't joined the Ascent to Dude Mountain 2016, uh, you know, I can still send out invites. So if you're interested, hit us up. Uh, it's a pick 'em league based on the spread. Uh, that's established. Well, it's on the, it's through ESPN, but it's, um, uh, you know, whatever the Vegas spread on the game is. And then you pick against that. And, you know, it's just for bragging rights and whatever. And it's free to join. So if you're interested, hit us up. Um, you know, like Tony mentioned last week, we've got people who have little to no interest or, uh, knowledge of football picking based on just whatever they want or a coin flip type situation or whatever. So if you just want to be part of it, that's fine too. All we ask is that you make picks each week. You know, yeah, that's it. Please. Other than that, hey, whatever. Do um, what you want. Also, trash talk, preferably. But, oh well, that's the, really the heart of it. Yeah, we hope. Yeah. We'll see. I, I think I'm going to be nice this year. I'm just going to pay compliments to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> really oh. cutting compliments. Oh, it's just the worst. No, um, and then the other bit of business that or business that I have is, uh, you know, like last week we, we were like, hey, you know, maybe if you got the time, swing by iTunes. You know, leave us a little, uh, a reviewer as we're now calling it, the, you know, uh, five star ball wash or five stars yeah. ball wash, whichever you want to call it. Either way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so if you, you know, get a chance, leave us a review. 
you know, because when you do that, it helps our uh, helps us become more visible when people go to iTunes looking for podcasts. So they're like, wow. Oh, look at all the balling this podcast is getting. People must love it. Wow. Uh, that broke up real quick, so can you start that again? <laughs> oh, said, wow. Look at all this ball washing this podcast gets. People must love This must be a great show. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what I got for business. So whatever you want to handle from here. Well, uh, Brian, mm-hmm. we have to say goodbye to one of our networks that we're on. You know, Tony. It's so hard to say goodbye. <laughs> oh, that would have been the perfect song to have ready. Ah, uh, all right. Shit. It's all right. <laughs> Dude, Boys to Men is the default. It's so hard to say goodbye. Come on. Yeah, you know, and I was trying, I was, I was like surprising you with this whole thing. Yeah. And that would have been the go-to song. <laughs> you were trying to come up with something that was cool and surprised me, and I just took a steamer right all over it. <laughs> No, it's that was All that right. that would have been the go to song to do this to. Sure, that's trite though. So so let's let's see what well, you got. Oh, dude, there's nothing trite than the one I got lined up. Oh, all right. <laughs> the fuck? Someone is beeping me. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's great. This morning, because we're going on vacation, I'm like, hey Leah, I'm totally gonna put Skype on your Kindle so I can talk when we're on vacation. Guess who's messaging me right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, is it Bob Barker? No. Uh, believe it or not, no. <sighs> is it Chuckles? <laughs> is it Max I, Truck? <laughs> I hope not. I, I hope I'm not getting DMs from Max Truck. <laughs> right? You're like, oh, let me switch over. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's to the Max. Oh, man. Again. Right. Again. Yeah. Anywho. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we got to say goodbye to the Wicked Radio Network. Mm-hmm. It's apparently been dissolved. Yeah. And uh, destroyed and whatever else. Yeah, it makes us sad in our pants. <laughs> Indeed. Mm-hmm. No, it, even Max Truck is like, I can't to the max. No, not at all. He, no. Yeah. He can't even fake it. No, out of respect. Yep. So, uh, Brian, moment of silence. The dissolving of Wicked Radio Network. Couldn't get anyone to spend even a modicum of money. So that's gone now. Yeah, that's a, that's a shame about Wicked, but, uh, you know, it's just like with anything else. You can't get a couple of people to sort of, like, pick it up and make it happen yeah. by the force of their will. Then you're not going to get there. And the only person trying to make anything happen by the force of their will is you. Yeah. Which is one of the most ineffectual, lazy fucks in the world. And this pie is not going to get there. Nope. Real shame. Yeah. See you on the other side, Wicked Radio. <laughs> I feel like we should do a, we'll be right back. <laughs> you know, like it just, <laughs> you know, like the way the news or whatever would do it. You know, they can take it down, play the music, go out nice and easy, and then. You know, come back with a 14 were killed today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <The> what? <laughs> yeah, 14 were killed in a suicide bombing in Tehran. In other news, popsicles. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, that, you're right. That's what it would be. Sorry. After depressing news, it's, a, they yeah. always come back with something that's less. There's depressing. this adorable puppy that opened a lemonade stand. <laughs> and then he got thrown out a window for saying something about doubling down on moistness. <laughs> <sighs> but, uh, yeah, you know what? Boys of Men would have been a go-to. Cause right, I, my, my sad music go-to is always Siri McLaughlin. <laughs> if those right. pauses in between the I Will Remember You, it's perfect. It drops No, sounds. that was great, actually, because it's harder. With, it would have been more difficult with uh, Boys to Men. So yeah. I, I think you chose wisely. <laughs> man, Boys to Men would have been great. <laughs> oh, man. That's all right, though. So I guess, you know. I'm sure Devery's got something up his sleeve. Oh, there's something up there, all right. To the max. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's, I don't think that works. To the, to the max. Oh, man. Yep, yep. So uh, so what What other business you got? Any others? Or? Ah, podcast-wise, that's about it, my friend. Okay. So how was your week? Uh, <laughs> all couple days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We recorded like, you know, this morning. <laughs> no. Basically. Um, no, I, I mean, it was, you know, it was a week, Brian. I mean, it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. T- today, though, the last two days of work were eh. T- 
today, the universe must have known that I'm going to be off for like a week and a half. Sure. Because it flopped its cosmic <laughs> dick in my face. <laughs> to the max. <laughs> to the max. Exactly. I mean, today was just a shit show. Yeah, that seems, that seems to be about the way it is. Part of it's because you're anticipating that. You know, so you're just, you know how it is, like, in, in ways, even if you don't mean to, you kind of start checking out ahead of time. Uh, yeah, this you is know? 100% true. Yeah, so you know, like, you're ahead the whole day, you're just like, ah, oh, so close, so close. And then, you know, things that maybe wouldn't bug you normally are kind of just like, why are you getting in the way of me just leaving? <laughs> uh, yeah, and you're, you might be 100% right there, because yeah. it seemed like that's a lot of what was going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Almost like you know, somebody's, like what you, what the, you know, but the way it plays in your head is that around the corner is someone twirling their mustache going, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Like, damn you, Snidely. Yeah. <laughs> you cunt. <laughs> Screwing up my wacky races. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it was, it, it just was like everything that could go wrong that I did. <laughs> right, for of work. course. Sure. And I was just like, really? Of course there's new construction here. Of course, there happens to be a party going on Wait, in the middle of the college campus. Did you say nude construction? That would be weird. But <laughs> to the max. Go ahead and pass. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just, uh, I don't know, it was weird. Yeah. Like, if, if the mother and father of today... Could have seen into the future, like if Papa Wednesday and Mama Wednesday <laughs> saw how bad this Wednesday was going to turn out. Yeah, they should have planned B. <laughs> oh wow, that's. I mean, should, that's it fair. should have been you know Papa Wednesday doing an old step and sidekick to the old Wednesday right. uterus. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I mean, in fairness, Tony. I mean, you know, we we used to. I used to post things to you on Twitter about you know Fist Fuck Friday. Um, and today, this is true. today's kind of your fist fuck Friday for the week. So it makes sense. The universe just adjusted. Yeah. yeah. And, and there was a part of me the whole time. I'm like, just, you know, stay the course. Cause right. you're going to, you got some relaxation coming up. That's right. Just smile, smile your way through the shit storm. You can always brush your teeth. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, granted I, I, it doesn't, my relaxation doesn't start until I get off the second plane. Right. Because, I mean, you know, we're getting up at, like, 3 in the morning to go to the airport. And nice, nice. It's too early at the airport to even get a Bloody Mary. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a shame right there. Bring your own. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. What yeah. the fuck am I thinking? Yeah, come on, man. What are you, a savage? All right. Yes. Well, I need <laughs> oh, wait. one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Are you a uh, – because I don't think I've asked you this because I, I don't – you haven't flown a ton, right? Not a ton, ton. No, I mean an, enough. I yeah. guess I don't know. Okay, it's not like I fly. I, maybe once every couple years. Yeah. You know? So are you, are you nervous on planes? Or are you good nah, on them? I, or? I don't give a shit. Doesn't bother you. Good. Okay. No. So at least yeah. there's that. At least you're not like you know getting amped up that way. You know? I, I get more bothered when they're like, "Turn off your devices." You know, it's like, "Oh fuck you." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I love what is it? I can't remember if it was Family Guy or one of the. Or if it was Simpsons or it was one of the cartoons, you know, where there's a kid like playing a Game Boy and they're like, you know, you got to turn that off. And he turns it off and the plane starts diving and they're like, turn it back on, turn it back on, you know. So I that yeah, I, I always picture that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of that whole thing. Yeah, because I mean, I, I've been on planes enough to know what the basic routine is. I don't need to hear your bullshit about the mask and the the vest and uh, whatever else, like, let me continue my podcast or the game I'm in a minute, whatever. Mm -hmm. Leave me out of it. Yeah. Don't bother me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I understand. That's That would be, yeah. I think most people are that way, that they just, that it, they just don't, they don't think, it, because it generally doesn't make a difference, you know? Like, right. th there's the a tiny chance that something could interfere with something else, but it's, you know. I mean, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fair enough. You know. Yeah, so I'll be I'll be fine once we're you know once we go that second plane and then we're like there. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be like, boom, ready, set, go yeah. to the max. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, bring me all your boozes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I am here to abuse myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm here to drink drink booze and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> Indeed. To paraphrase. Rest in peace, Piper. Yeah, I'll have to uh, 
Well, we'll have to see how to. We, we've never done the all inclusive thing, so we'll have to see. Uh, see how pacing myself works. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I mean, it's all. It's if I just go, hey, I need another one, and it shows up, and I don't have to grab my wallet. It might be a problem. <laughs> nah, I don't see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't see how it could be a problem. <laughs> yeah, seems perfectly normal. Right. All right. Right on. Yeah. But yeah, how about, how about yourself, my friend? Uh, you know, we well, we went out Saturday. I figured we'll talk about a couple of things from that in a few minutes. Oh, but, for sure. I figured that was coming. Yeah. Um. But you know, uh, I've talked on the crazy life and stuff. You know, I had a a disability hearing today and you know, that was rough because it's, you know, I've known about it for months and months and months, you know? So there's just the whole time I'm like, uh, just, just get here already. Basically, you know, and man, right. walking out of there, I felt like somebody just lifted the biggest freaking weight off of my shoulders, you know, ah, and nice. no matter which way it goes, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know what? At least it's, that's over. Yeah. Right? It's, it's done. You know, like it's out of my hands. I can't, I, I, you know, there's, there's nothing more I can do at the moment, you know? So I was like, ah, it just felt so nice walking out of there to, you know, to have that feeling. Cause it's, you know, it's not often where you have something that you feel really is weighing you down that you can literally just go done, <laughs> you know, and, and, and it's over, you know? So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So there was that. And, you know, that's about it though. Other than that, you know, cause again, it's been a short week, although I do have one quick thing that's kind of a follow up. Uh, right. you know, we, I, I've brought up various things about the, um, broken Matt Hardy, you know, uh, that we've talked about with the final deletion and, uh, you know, the Jericho podcast. And, right. uh, so I was watching Raw Monday and there's a guy named Titus, uh, Titus O'Neill who comes out and he's cutting a promo and I feel bad for the guy cause he came out and kind of stumbled over his words to start. And it just, he, it, he never caught his footing after that, you know? And after a little while, it wasn't a great promo. The whole thing just was meh, you know? So as it's going on, at one point, I forgot something happened, and the crowd in the place is going, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> and, that's hilarious. And I'm laughing because, you know, that's in TNA. That wasn't on WWE. But, again, to show the effect of what the Hardys did, the delete chant, which is, I guess they've been doing a little bit in, um, uh, TNA. Um, and he did on, you know, the Jericho podcast has now permeated the WWE to where, like, if the crowd doesn't like something, I'm curious to see if they keep doing the delete gimmick or if they go back to boring, you know, or whatever. Cause I mean, you know, it was nice to hear something different, you know? Right. But I laughed really hard when they were like, delete, delete, <laughs> delete, you know? Um, so yeah, that's that. I I am a fan of the delete, delete, delete. Oh yeah, one of the guys in that's the, fantastic. The doing the job uh, podcast. One of the guys who's one of the hosts of it. He switched the like. I think it. I can't remember if it's his ringtone or if it's his alert for texts to where it just goes delete, delete, delete. <laughs> so I was like, and he's like, I did this, and it's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that was awesome. So that's one thing I never update is my tones. Oh, I never do. Well, my phone's on silent most of the time, so it'd be a waste anyway. I always, I always think about it when my phone rings because my, when my phone rings, it's Ace of Spades, which oh. isn't bad. Right. But it's the very beginning of the song, you know, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if I hear a song on the radio, I can immediately grab it from my phone. Sure. So you can hear and, guitar with your phone. <laughs> and, well, yeah, of course. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It's not. Yeah. Like mine yeah. is, I, I, uh, I think mine's just a generic old phone noise still. I don't think I've changed it. Yeah, I really need to update my shit. Like I said, mine's on silent all the time, so there's really not a lot of point to it, you know, so. Right. But yeah, so that was it. I just wanted to bring that up because that made me laugh, you know, that, again, a TNA gimmick is kind of moved into WWE. That is pretty great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> just kind of shows you that, uh, you know, they're starting to swing the... Uh... You know, a little it, bit more. It tells it tells you how how over that that gimmick is. Yeah, for sure. That no matter how, even if it's for because it's really dumb or it, it feels cheesy, it doesn't matter. It worked. You it know, works. It works exactly. So, how does that make the, the Hardy Boys feel right now? Like we're back, baby. Oh, it's got to be. I mean, Matt's got to be loving that. You know, the yeah. fact that on Raw people are delete, delete, delete. You know, because hell, even TNA's got to like that because. When people, if they don't know the relevance, if they look up the relevance, it's boom, it's, you're directed to TNA. 
you know, to, to their, uh, to the final deletion or to the broken Matt Hardy thing or whatever. So, right. Exactly. Yeah. I guess, uh, I, I haven't been watching, but I guess Jeff is now broken Jeff or broken Nero or something like that. I guess he put himself through a table on the show. <laughs> so he's doing the gimmick too, I guess a little bit, but I don't know. Oh, that, see if they do it too much. I know. Gonna jump right? through the old jump yep, the shark. That's what I thought too. I don't know. This I, is a, uh, this is that it's something they got to go easy on. Yep. I, I thought I might uh, see if I can, because I don't think, I forgot what network it's on. I don't think I get it, but I see. I might look online to see if they have videos or whatever to where I can watch. Because I'm curious. Right. I don't necessarily want to watch the rest of TNA, but I'm curious of that part of it, you know. So, yeah. Anyway, enough of that. So, Fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, we went out uh, Saturday uh, to watch the UFC fights. Oh, which, UFC 202. Which was an awesome night of fights. But we're not, it's not really about the fights, you know, I mean. Well, we should do a little fight talk. If you want, that's fine. There, I'm just, there was three fights that were, I mean, the last yeah. three of the card were pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> well, one, one was barely a fight. <laughs> well, I know, but the, I mean, there's yeah. something that was brought to my attention later that I didn't even realize what happened. All right. Well, we'll just talk about it now. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Brian Rumble Johnson against, you know, Glover Textera. I think Tish, that's how you say it. Tishera. whatever. Whatever. Yeah. I, I thought that was honestly going to be the fight in a night. Yeah. Because those guys are just like, they're just bangers. Yeah. No, nah, I was like, like, what was it, 13, 13 14 seconds. seconds? Yep. Like, Glover's like, here I come. Rumble's, okay, uppercut. Yeah. Rumble, <laughs> like you know, Mortal Kombat style yeah, uppercut. Yeah. Rumble, young man, rumble. It was... Dude, were you aware that it sent Glover's tooth flying across the ring? Oh, no, that's awesome, though, for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, it was a hell of an uppercut. I mean, no question. It was... <laughs> Dude, rumble can hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I've heard. So... I, I just can't I can't believe it went that quick, though. I thought it was going to yeah, be a more drawn-out thing. I'm with you. I thought I mean, we were amped for that fight. Like, when it got to that, we were like, yeah, here we go, you know, because... Yeah. Because, you know, you don't get fights like that that often to where guys, like, not at that level. Most of the time, if you're going to get a just a what should be like a slugfest or whatever, a lot of times it's the guys that are a little further down the card. You know, because usually once you start getting close to the title picture, guys start pulling back a little bit on their hands because they don't want to get caught. They don't want to just throw wildly. You know, they want to, you know, whereas those those guys that are more of that undercard, when they let their fist go, most of the time it's just mush face for everybody, you know? Yeah, exactly. So we were like, yeah, you know, and then boom, and it was over. We're like, holy, I mean, the place erupted though, cause it was a hell of a knockout, you know? Dude, we were... Glover guy hit so hard, he tried double legging the ref. Yeah. He, he was not, it took him what, probably a full minute to get back with it. Yeah. He tried I mean, he standing was, up. He was on the moon. Yeah, he tried standing up and immediately was wobbly, and they were like, yeah, you need to sit down. And then a little bit, if, what, about a minute later, he tried getting up again and was still wobbly-legged. And they were like, yeah, maybe you should sit down a little longer. That was, I haven't seen a guy that wobbly off of a punch in a long time. You know, usually okay. they kind of, you know, they get, the reset gets hit, and then they're like, hey, what's going on? You know, but you're you right. He tried, to, wrong. he tried to take down the ref with, you know, yeah, it was grappling the ref. It was Which great. You do see that, you know, when guys get knocked out because, you know, before the punch, they're going for a shoot. After the punch, they think the fight's still going on. They don't realize they've been knocked out necessarily. What's well, that? They're training. Just go, you yep. know, go with the training. Yeah. So that was crazy. Uh, so so you, you had that. The one before that was wicked too. That was, um, Cowboy Cow and Cowboy Cerrone versus. Oh, I can't remember who he fought now. Some dude. Hold on. <laughs> Some dude. You're right. It was uh, a Rick story. Yeah, Rick the horror story. Yes. And, and I've always loved Cowboy, which I didn't know. Uh, I, I heard this today on another podcast. Also, too, he's never been a champion. Yeah, that I knew. Uh, they mentioned that. Shit. They mentioned that at one of the other pay per views about how, like, pretty much, like I mentioned to you, it feels like he's on every card or every other card because whenever there's, there's like, oh, someone pulled out at the last minute, usually it's like Cowboys, you know, call Cowboy. Just yep, like, remember. Budweiser and comes on the ring. <laughs> yeah, well, remember when uh, Jones couldn't fight um, uh, Cormier, 
you know, I told you there were things going or memes on the internet. I'm sure you saw them too, where it was just like a bat signal, but with a cowboy hat, and it shows Cormier just looking up at or uh, Cerrone. I mean, looking up at it. You know, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what happened, and that's what it is. That dude takes a fight on like no notice so many times, or it feels like it anyway. You know? He's a fucking beast, and he goes like it doesn't matter who he's against. He usually puts up a pretty good showing, dude. And that combo yeah, he, he threw. He, he was dropped wreck. Rick story. Yeah, Rick the horror story. <sighs> Through, I'm doing our I'm doing our video game reference. Nice. D- did some Tekken shit on him. <laughs> he did, man. Hit him with like a four piece and a side of tater tots. <laughs> he sure did, man. He certainly gave him the old. Uh, Dude, it was like what was it? Like jab, liver punch, head kick. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Or head punch, head kick, whatever. Yeah, it was. It's just. It was a wicked combination, though, and then Horror Story was Night Night. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a great combo. Oh, it was it was brutal, but it was yeah, it it was well done on his part. But you're right; it's like he feels like that Bisping guy, or you know, situation to where it's like Bisping never got a title shot until basically everyone in front of him had to fall over dead or be suspended, pretty much, and then he finally gets a shot. And it's like kind of wonder at some point it's like maybe just let's just throw cowboy in for a title once and let's just see what happens i, I wonder if it's got to do with his because he has a very like i don't give a fuck yeah. attitude i think I he just like got to something fight. to do with it i do too i kind of wonder almost if he he's just like i just want to fight <laughs> like right yeah, kind yeah, of that's like true too. i don't care who just put someone in front of me i'll fight him and that's kind of his attitude because i've heard interviews with him and that's yeah. basically his mindset that yeah. he's had since he was a kid and that's my <laughs> he's like i'll just throw down yeah you know? it just makes me wonder if he, he I don't want to say this in a disrespectful way, but almost like he doesn't give a shit if he has the belt, you know, like he just wants to go. And uh, so where maybe they'd be like, well, let's hold him back in case somebody gets hurt because we'll just plug in Cowboy. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, know? maybe. And he's ready yeah. to go. I don't know. And people love him. He's he's a, you know, a, lo- a pretty well liked guy uh, by the crowds. So, yeah. Right. But yeah, I'm with you. I've always been a fan of his and. Yeah, man, he's got a giant feather in that hat, though. <laughs> that was an impressive. The what T say? Soundboard teeth called like an ostrich feather. In yeah, his hat. something like that. It was. It, it was, was impressive. It was a big hat or a big uh, feather. Um, um, and then yeah, you know, he had a main event. Mm-hmm, Connor which, McGregor, Nate Diaz, too. Yeah, which, which everybody was all excited for, and there was all the hype in the world for it. Oh, well, we'll definitely talk about the hype for the going on the bar. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. And it was, it was a really good fight though. I, you know, what's weird is I've seen so many people talking about how McGregor ran away from Diaz. Have you seen this? I, I have seen it. And yeah. I, I, even Diaz said it too. He said something about him running away. I'm like, dude, you didn't run away. Look at your face. Like yeah. you can't run away and throw punches. He, he hit him. A bunch. Do you know what he did a lot of? He backpedaled and bobbed his head backwards, so Diaz couldn't touch him a lot of the time. That first few rounds, Diaz was barely touching him, you know? And, like, we were watching the fights, and we were like, look, the first two rounds were dominated by McGregor. It wasn't even close in my book, you know? Oh, no. And the next two rounds were, you know, the third round, I think you and I were both like, eh, Diaz probably won that, but we weren't like... Definitely, like he got a late take or not a takedown. He got a late like flurry in the third round, I think it was. And we were like, well, that gives right. him the round, you know. In the fourth round, we were like, eh, it was close. And then the fifth round was, you know, probably Diaz because of the takedown at the very end, right? But I still think that fourth round went to McGregor. It didn't feel like Diaz really did a lot, you know. So in our, you know, you and I both were just like, eh, McGregor probably won the fight as soon as it was over, and sure enough, he did, you know. Right. I I don't know, man. We've watched a lot of fights. I didn't really feel like McGregor ran away. I felt like he was I, right there. I think, I mean, there was definitely times he turned and kind of like scooted away, but I wouldn't yeah. call it running. No. I'd call it more preserving his round wins. Yeah. I, I honestly. I, I, I'm sure he knew he was ahead on points. Yeah. And you see that all the so time like, in title why? fights. You know? And I know this wasn't a title it's, fight. Especially. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But, you know, get, yeah. Because Diaz is like he's like a he's like Jason Voorhees. <laughs> he just keeps coming. He does. And that's the thing you know? with, with Diaz. His boxing's good and his ground game's good. And I couldn't say enough while we're watching the fight. I'm like, look how McGregor is not letting him get his legs. You know, yeah. like I kept well, saying, leg kicking him too. Yeah, but it's like McGregor would not let him. Did you catch after the fight? Like McGregor thought he broke his foot in the fight. Yeah, because he's he's not used to doing that shit. Yeah, and afterwards he was like, "Fuck leg kicks." He's like, "My leg hurt, my foot hurts like hell." <laughs> but those leg kicks kept 
uh, Diaz back, you know? Yeah. And and plus, when Diaz did try to take him down, he stuffed him. He didn't let him take him down until the very last round, I think, you know? Right. Um, or maybe was a, what, one in the last the, 15 seconds. Yeah, it was, it was so and, late. And you notice fight. every time McGregor knocked down Diaz and Diaz like went to go in the guard and they, and McGregor just kind of waved them like, nope, stand them up. Yep. Exactly. Because I mean, you don't want to go into that game. Right. Because he knows better. That was again, yeah. they, they said that after the last fight, McGregor said it at one point. He was like, I probably shouldn't have went, gone into his guard. No. You know, McGregor wants to be on his feet. Yep. Exactly, because yeah. McGregor's better when he's he's kicking and throwing punches. It's yeah. Diaz is probably the better striker, but at least give yourself the puncher's chance. You know, right? When you're on the ground, you're on the ground with like a, an elite level jujitsu guy, <laughs> and McGregor's yeah. not. So yeah, but anyway. So I mean, it, it was a it was a I mean they they went to fucking war. Yeah, and I, it was I, a hell of a fight. I've seen like right afterwards, Diaz was like you know like calling for a third fight, which. Who doesn't want a third fight? I want to see another one, you know? But they're talking that, like, McGregor is kind of more along the lines of, let Diaz come down to me if he wants a third fight. Right. And, well, did, you, did you hear what Dana said, though? No. Dana's like, nah, McGregor, next fight's not going to be against Diaz. No, for nope, sure. He's got McGregor. a title to defend. Yeah. You know, that has to be his next fight. Otherwise, Although, they need I'm to strip sure him. Diaz, Diaz said uh, that he's not going to fight anybody until it's McGregor. Yeah. Well, that's what Diaz even said. That he was like, you know, basically saying that McGregor shouldn't fight anyone else until yeah. they they get a third fight out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, but he's got a belt. You have to defend that belt, you know, kinda. But dude, but, McGregor Diaz three. I know. License to print money. Oh, I agree. I would love it if Diaz would be like, you know what? Cool. I'll come down to your your level and let's fight for the belt. Man, I'd love dude. to see it. Uh, you know? Diaz can do it. He, oh, he's yep. fought at 150 before. Yep. I, th I think that would be an awesome way to cap it off. Because the first fight was totally on um, – was a, an anomaly or whatever because of the weight stuff. The second fight, they both had time. They both hit the same weight-ish, you know. Right. The third fight, do it on – you know, why not? Let's let's see what – let's, you know, let's just see what happens when you drop him down to that level. Because, you know, when you take weight off a guy, you take away some of his, his power. Yeah, you know, definitely. And you allow McGregor to have some of his speed back, which is right. one of his one of the reasons he's so good at 150 is his speed, you know. So I, I'd love to see him come down to that and just, you know, put the belt on the line. But he does have to deal with someone else. And I don't know that you can just hand Diaz, you know, the title shot, you know, without not fighting in the class in a while. And, you know, but right. But would people want to see that? Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, they would. I don't care what they're fighting for. I, I'd uh, like to I, I just like watching both those guys fight. Yeah. They're both fun to watch. Yep. I'm all for seeing them fight again. Like, yeah, I, definitely. I, I don't see how they wouldn't do it. You're right, though. I, it's a license to print money. Even if oh, dude. McGregor's got to get a title fight out of the way and then his next fight is Diaz again. Sure. You know? I mean, it's either that or McGregor needs to hand over the belt and let, you know, and just say, hey, I'll come back for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll come get it once this business is over. But anyway, yeah. I mean, they got to start recouping some of that $4 billion they dropped on to the UFC. Yeah. So. yeah. Oof. That's a lot. Yeah, I know. And I, and I saw, what was it I said before the fight? They said McGregor was going to make uh, at least $3 million off that fight. Yeah. So I'd like to know what Diaz made. Um, I don't know. It's probably out there. I'm just curious, yeah. you know, in comparison to the three million that McGregor made, because I'm sure it's nowhere near three million. No, I would doubt it. Yeah, because Diaz is not the draw that McGregor is. So I'm gonna move on while you're looking that up a little bit. Uh, so we're sitting at the bar, and uh, you know they're doing the intros for the final fights, and you know Diaz uh comes out, and the crowd, you know, the place we were at was kind of split, which surprised me. Because I thought I was going to be one of the few people kind of like, you know, uh, thinking Diaz might win the fight. But there were a lot of people there that were for Diaz. And yeah. then when they introduced McGregor, the place just goes crazy with USA chants. And yeah. it, and at first I'm just like, what the fuck? You know? And um, – or no, I'm sorry. McGregor came up first, I think. Right. Yeah. So while he came out, <laughs> the crowd's chanting USA and I'm like – what are you doing? Like, he's from, you know, I'm in my head, I'm going, he's from Ireland. Why are you? And because it reminded me of the first time we went to this place and watched Aldo and McGregor and, um, people kept chanting USA for McGregor. And the, it was like, he's Irish and Aldo's, uh, what Brazilian, I believe. So, you know, 
It's like there's no Americans in this fight, you know. Yeah, no, exactly. So I thought I, I wasn't thinking, and then I was like, wait a minute, Diaz is from the U.S. You know, it's like why are they chanting USA while McGregor's coming out? You know, it's like I, it was so weird to me. You know, uh, I I don't know, but they did it throughout the fight though too. They were chanting USA instead of you know that was how they were saying that they were for Diaz. I guess. I I guess. Yeah. It was dumb. Yeah, I'm with you. But that's not even the craziest. <laughs> oh, uh, real quick. Yeah. McGregor made three million. Diaz made two million. Oh, okay. That's more than I thought. So good. Yeah. Good for him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he deserved it. So, yep. um, that, I, I don't, who did it? Uh, never mind. I, we can talk about that later. I didn't look up the fight bonuses. I'm just curious. But anyway, moving on. Unless you have it right there. I do not. No. Okay. So that's not where I just, I just have their purse basically. Okay. I'm going to write yeah. it down so I look it up. Anyway, um, so that, that first thing wasn't even the craziest thing. So during the fights, like across the night, <laughs> there's this guy to Tony's right and my left that was, you, you had video of him up, didn't you? Uh, it was on the old salty language Snapchat. Okay. Salty underscore language. If you, you uh, missed it. If you, well, I guess you can't go back and see it now. You well, just, do you still have the video? No. Oh, okay. It's, it's been, I believe it's been lost okay. either. I was going to say, if you still had it, you you know, throw it up on the Instagram or something. But Brian, so, if I was thinking right, I would have. Fair enough. So this, this guy, man doesn't always think right. This guy is just, I don't even know. He's got so much energy that he's like bobbing and weaving <laughs> during the fights. And Dude, he, he was throwing, he was <laughs> shadow boxing. <laughs> yeah. And he, well, I didn't know if you were paying attention to those guys. Cause I, I you know, I wasn't exactly like, pouring beers in my face yeah so i was pretty aware of just my surroundings sure. yeah me too they the amount of shots that table did yeah. was insane right that i didn't see but you i think you pointed it out to me that there were a lot of shots going over there especially yeah that table and the table right across from them mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. guys were consuming lots of shots right which is crazy but yeah that guy cracked me up so much but it was funny because you were watching him more so because he was because kind of, t was in between me and him so i couldn't full-on see all of his antics right but at the same time that's going on i'm looking forward to you know just looking ahead and there's this big screen you know in front of us and there's like this crowd of people up and up by it which is weird to me it's like why wouldn't you just like calm down sit in your seats or whatever but they were like moved as the fights went on, they got closer and closer. Like all of a sudden, some main main act was going to take the stage and play or something. You know, like you you know how it is. You had a concert. You start out at the back, and as people disperse during the breaks, you move forward a little bit until you're all well, the way at the front for the final act. You know, they thought Pungy Pit was going to be out there shooting <laughs> guess, uh, cocktail stirs out of herself. Probably. Yeah. So this guy that I see. And I posted a video on my Snapchat and I still have, maybe I'll throw, it's not a great video of him though. It's, I, I got it a little late, unfortunately, but this guy during the McGregor, uh, Diaz fight is just screaming at the screen. You know, like whenever, I don't, I forgot who he was rooting for, but it's like, you know, whenever one of, whoever it was would throw a punch and he'd be like, yeah, get him, get him. And he's just, and I don't mean like kind of yelling. I mean, this guy is at the top of his voice yelling at this tv and yeah yeah and just like going crazy i mean picture yeah, he joe, was fired up like picture joe swanson from family guy and just dial it up you know <laughs> i mean he was just crazy it's very accurate and we're just dying because i see this guy and i smack tony and i'm like dude look at this guy you know and and he looks over and oh man just in time to see just yeah yeah gal that's how you do it you know it's just i mean you'd swear he thought that he if he yelled loud enough that you know like he was a coach or something it was nuts and um i don't know i i've never been the type to yell at sporting events generally i so. i never i mean i like watching sports yeah especially the combat sports i really get into more than anything else yeah i've that's just not in me either yeah i mean i'll cheer if some dude gets you know again like when uh rumble crushed to we all like the whole place was like oh you know like that well, kind of thing yeah i'll get into moments like that yeah but like i mean unless i've got money on the fight <laughs> right. i really don't care who wins or loses i don't have anything invested besides no. my time watching it no and really that's my thing is most of the time what i really want is good fights 
Exactly. I, I, I just want to be, you know, entertain me. It's like yeah. ancient Rome. <laughs> exactly. Oh, are you not entertained? Oh, man. That guy clearly is. <laughs> Those two guys just cracked cracked us up for like I we kept looking like back and forth because they were both so entertaining. You and it stinks because they weren't the same way, so you couldn't watch them both at the same time. Yeah, from where I know. We were. it would have been great if we had a you know picture in picture or something. Yeah. You know, the only way we would have been able to do that would have been with some phone magic or something, you know, but exactly it was, oh man, that was something. So yeah, that's all I got from that night. Unless you got something extra. Uh, no, it's just, I mean, it's always a good time as much as that is like a slob bar that we go to. Yeah. Sometimes. I really, I, I really do enjoy going there. Although the beer selection, they have a lot of beers was kind of lacking. I thought, yeah. And I, I, say I really this. wasn't in the mood to drop another giant paycheck yeah, on no bourbon. Doubt. Well, you know, it's something that cracks me up a little bit too was uh, like there were way more meatheads at this one than there were at any we've been to. Like, oh yeah, there this were is true. way more of the guys that are like if this was a couple years ago, I think we would have seen a lot of affliction in tap out shirts. Oh, absolutely. There have been like so much bedazzling going yeah. on. Yeah. And I did see one guy who had the bedazzled jeans on and you know, I, I a, saw him too. He, yeah. and he had an affliction shirt yep, on because he just had the shiny it. angel wings on his back yep. and it's like, oh God. It's like somebody ah, needs... the, the douche is strong in this one. Yep, yep. But that's all right. Yeah. You know, whatever. Everyone had everyone seemed to have a good time and even though it was, you know, ruckus and noisy, it was, you know, Oh well, we can't. We speaking of ruckus and noise. We, do you remember the guy as we're leaving? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I forgot about that. We're leaving, and I'm wearing a. Uh, I have a yellow Michigan, uh, like baseball hat that I'm wearing. University of Michigan. University of Michigan. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, this guy yells out this window, and it took me a minute to realize because he was slurring it, but he was complimenting me on the hat and said "Go blue," and I was like, hey. Hey. "What was that?" So he's just slightly intoxicated. Oh, jeez, yeah. And um, so I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, whatever. And then uh, he said something. I don't remember what he said first, but then he was like, I'm lit as fuck, as they were, like, pulling away. <laughs> and we all just lost it. Well, you and I lost it. I don't know if anybody yeah, else heard it. Just me. the old uh, hanging out the back window yelling, <laughs> I'm lit as fuck, as yeah. the car's peeling out of the parking lot. <laughs> that was great. I imagine the whole car was lit as fuck, and hopefully they all made it home safe. I hope so, yeah. It was <laughs> it was something, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy is right. Yeah. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, these kids. Although I, I do feel that they were drastically understaffed that night because our poor waitress. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what the fuck was her name? <sighs> Good question. I couldn't remember it all night. <laughs> it starts with a C, and I'm drawing a blank now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Casey, she was Casey. ahead of us. Huh? Casey? Casey. Casey, Casey, Casey right. Yeah. Casey, poor Casey. Mm. She was ahead of us, and then she had a whole line of booths, like, across the other side of the bar. Yeah, there was, like, a, a whole line of, like, um, tall top tables in between us and her. Like, her section was divided by a line of tables, basically. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Not at all. It's like, why didn't she have those tables and they put someone else over there? That's just silly. So, uh, the, I mean, I, I still gave her a decent tip because I could tell she was dealing with a shit show. Mm. It wasn't her incompetence that was causing her drinks to be delayed. and Right. I, well, you know, and like, the, and well, squirrels, and chips, and salsa not to show up. Right. That that is more of the problem. The drinks thing is when, okay. When you order a drink and you see that the service is not like boom boom fast, you have to start getting smarter. And that's yeah. generally when you anytime you see them, even if you have half of one left, you go ahead and order another one. Yeah, like I need get one on deck. You saw me. How many times did I sit with an empty glass? Because I was ordering like that. When I had about halfway, if she'd walk by, I'd be like, hey, can I get another one? Like, yeah, you know. And by the time yeah. she'd bring it, I'd have that one pretty much finished. And it was. Right. You, you know, got to play the game. Yep. It's just being smart. But exactly. the food is a different story because you can't do much. You know, that's. There's nothing you could do there. Well, and they, yeah, and they ran out of nachos, too. They had bottomless nachos, which is wow. something they shouldn't do on those nights. Yeah. It's like I didn't realize their chips and salsa were bottomless. I didn't either. Otherwise, I would have probably gotten them. I'm sure everybody ordered it. Why, wouldn't, Why you, wouldn't you? Right? Why wouldn't you do that and put it on the table? I mean, that's my thing is it's like, yeah, they should probably get rid of that, you know, or put a limit on it. Like, you know, you get one refill or I don't know. But I would um, just take it off the Maybe their thought table. is once we're out, fuck you. You don't get it. I you guess. Know? Yeah. We made our money because, I mean, I know True they, I think it was like five, yeah. six bucks for bottomless not chips and salsa. Yeah. You know they're making money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, I guess, you know. 
because I mean, they, they how were, much money do you think they're making on beer that night? Oh yeah, true. Pl- and yeah. shots and shots. Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ. And pitchers of Mountain Dew. Uh. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about that. Look, I have two glowing green vessels of diabetes. Oh man, you know it's so fun. I'm sitting here drinking a Mountain Dew as we're talking too. Oh. <laughs> um, it's funny. Like what happens with me is it's like every once in a while I have a craving for it, so right. I want one. And I'm good. You know, like I don't want to drink it all the time for various reasons. One, I like my teeth. And two, I just don't want to drink it all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but whenever I see people drinking it like that and it's just like, man, when you see it in a pitcher, it really makes you go, that is not a color that exists. It's got that (laughs) slurm color. (laughs) Yes. That is what I think of every time too is that damn slurm episode, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. So anyway, good times. Good times. Yeah, it was always always a good time. I love going out and watching the fights. Yeah, me I mean, too. We, we used to do the pay per views at home. It's just not the same. I kind of like being in, in. Yeah, it feels very tribal. Yeah, well, it's, it certainly does, especially when you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> freaking out. You have to expect there to like fires to be started, and someone yeah. falls in a deer. Seriously, I was waiting for him to just like flip a table or something. You know, I was like, geez. I mean, you know, he he seemed like a super nice dude. Like he, you know, at one point because he wanted to hear the post fight stuff. So he asked if they could turn the TV up and, you know, he seemed really nice because I heard him talking to people, but it was just so funny how once that switch was flipped, man, he went just primal, you know, I was like, dude, calm down. Yeah. Easy, big you fella. Gonna, easy. You're going to chew, chew on his bear claw. Here you go. Right. A, a, a real bear claw. <laughs> like here, yeah, an actual bear claw, right. not a donut. Right. It's like here, wrestle this bear for a minute and, you know, yeah. calm you down. See if you get all tuckered out. <laughs> yeah. So shh. You got a stroke him behind the ear or something. Yeah, right. Oh, man. So anyway, yeah, that was a good time. So yeah. you got anything else from that or no? Nah, from the fight night, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah. it was just good times had by all. All right, cool. So, you know, last week you had a couple of stories, you know, yeah. that were like, hey, you know, we don't really do the headlines anymore, but... You know, yeah, like I have the exception for Swedish pig freaks. Yeah, you know, and this week I kind of stumbled across one that I was like, eh, I think we got to talk about this one real oh, quick. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is from the Smoking Gun, and the headline is Ohio quote gorilla quote busted lands behind bars. And uh, yeah, it says uh, an, er- an erratic Ohio man who is acting like a gorilla and masturbating on the sidewalk is facing a disorderly conduct charge, according to police. Wait, how is he acting like a girl? Is he dragging a baby around? I'll get to it. (laughs) Okay. Responding to 911 calls about a pair of white males running around the lot uh, taking off their clothes, Warren City Police Department cops Friday morning encountered Timothy Cook, who reportedly had been growling and punching the cement. Uh, Cook, a witness told officers, had entered a state motor vehicle's office and began waving his arms around. He then exited the building and began masturbating on the sidewalk, according to a police report. Well, nothing gets you hotter than the BMV. Absolutely. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, you yeah. need something to pass the time, right? Exactly. Uh, when a cop subsequ- subsequ- yeah, subsequently geez, approached Cook, the suspect was sweating profusely and, quote, acting like a gorilla. Uh, Cook, an officer noted, was squatting on all fours, punching the blacktop and jumping up and down, screaming non-coherently. <laughs> Can I just say that gorillas have notoriously small penises? Well, I mean, that's... That's probably why he was so angry. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh man. Like I, I saw this headline on Facebook actually. Like they have a little news thing that pops up on the side, and right. I just happened and it was said something like "man arrested for masturbating and and um, acting like a gorilla," and I was like, "Well, I'm in." <laughs> yeah. Like all right. Interested? <laughs> Clickbait work. Right. Go on and. Yeah, so like I said, every once in a while, I come across a story like this, and it's like, yeah, yeah, way to go, Ohio, making us proud, making us proud. <laughs> the south of the north, man, I'm telling you, it Ohio is the North Florida. You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> you got that right. There's lots of dumb shit that happens in our state. Yep. So, I, mean, I don't know if we quite reach Florida levels. Nah, there's moments, but you're right. There's definitely moments, but I mean, most of the time, no. Yeah, most when, of the time. When we used to do weird news, half the time it came out of Florida. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It was so funny because, you know, I remember us reading it and be like, hey, this happened in Florida. Huh. <laughs> yeah, weird. <laughs> I'm shocked. Oh, wait, no, no, the other thing. So, yeah, that was. I, I do miss reading those stories. I'd be like, 
Dateline. <laughs> what, what the, the hell? hell? As soon as the rumor began to spread that Zendaya might be playing Peter Parker's most famous wow, partner, I don't know where this Watson, is coming from. Social media went indiscriminately bonkers. Wow. Go on, bonkers. Yes, I'm listening. <laughs> wow. I I feel like I should go back and cut that out of there. <laughs> nah. Right. Warts and all, warts baby. And all it is. All right. Fair enough. Enjoy hearing about Peter Parker. and. Well, that was actually, it's a story I have, but I didn't think it would autoplay considering it wasn't even on that tab. And I hadn't activated, like I hadn't gone to that tab. It just decided. Ah, Brian, the cocksucking internet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. So, uh, yeah, what were you saying? You said you missed reading what? I'm, I sometimes miss reading those stories. Mm hmm. Cause, cause I, I, I mean, I, I, it's, I don't want to go back to our old format, per right, se. Right. Right. But I liked, you know, they're doing the like, Dateline, Kissimmee <laughs> St. Cloud. Right. And, you know, we never knew what each other's stories were. Right. Yeah. 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 Cause we never share them. That was, the, no. the, that was my favorite part. Was that was we, half the fun. Right. And don't get me wrong. You know, sometimes we'd know, but it's, you know, I, I still, if I'm on Reddit, I still will comb through the weird stories, not be for the show at this point so much. Like if I see one that I'm like, Oh man, you know, then sure. But for the most sometimes part, sometimes there's something irresistible. Yeah. So most of the time I'm just looking at them just for my own amusement now. Cause they're just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, well, there's a good subreddit for it just called not, not the onion. Right. You know? Yep. There's yeah. another one called, uh, I think it's just weird news or it's something like that, you know, or news of the yeah. weird. That's what it is. News of the right. weird. Yep. And those are two of the ones I used to go through all the time. A lot of times the stories are the same, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. But that's all right. So I guess since the, you know, the internet gave away what I had on my next tab, I'm just going to move into this one real quick. I'm in. I missed it last week when we recorded or Friday, um, that it happened that day. And I kind of wish I would have seen it because I wanted to talk about it. You know how whenever something comes up in comics, you know, in the internet about it, you know. Right. So they announced that, like, it's not, I think it's not confirmed, but they think that um there's an actress named Zendaya that uh, looks like she's going to be playing Mary Jane in the next Spider-Man movie. And she's not uh, white and she's not a redhead. So. With a name like Zendaya? Yeah. Um, huh. Right. Uh, so people were, you know, uh, obviously people were flipping out because. People are savages. Yeah. And, you know, it's really funny because, like, the article that I have is that Dan Slott, who's uh, one of the writers of uh, Spider-Man, responded. And, uh, you know, on Twitter to the people acting like idiots. And don't listen. If, if you like – if you, you're fine with – you know, if you want Mary Jane to be the redhead, knockout, whatever, that's fine. But, you know, like I always had an issue with her because – I don't know. It's just – as geeky as he is, I know they grew up together and stuff, but it was just, you know how it was. It was like, for me, I always had issues with the, the Mary Jane thing anyway, cause she goes on to be a model and all this, and it's like, oh, <laughs> I always thought that was so dirty. Come on. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, you know, whatever. Now, maybe in today's world, it works better. But when I was a kid and I'd look around and you see nerds, you look around and you never, at the time, really saw someone like the Mar the way Mary Jane was portrayed with nerds like that. You know, yeah. Like, like I said, oh, you're you're a nerdy newspaper photographer, <laughs> creep with a smoke show redhead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And I know they were trying to give him a win because life was constantly punching him in the dick, but it was like you know whatever. True. So anyway, so Dan Slott's responses were like, you know, heroes and characters come in every color and they're for everyone. There's nothing about Peter Parker or Mary Jane that has to be white, which I agree with. For sure. You know, like most of his comments I agree with. Uh says, uh, here's another one from him. Uh There's 50 plus years of a white Peter Parker and a, and a white Mary Jane. Those comics and movies aren't being burned or erased. It's okay to share the toys, <laughs> which that one... <laughs> I do love that approach, you know, and his last comment says it's okay for everyone to have the most popular characters reflect them and to have a new and to have new original characters reflect them too. Right. You know, and I, I agree with that. Like, especially, you know, we're doing movies and stuff and it's so, I don't know. It's, you know how it is. Like every artist that takes over a book changes the appearance, the appearance of the characters, whether it's their style or they'll be like, Oh, with this arc, we want to, you know, a new writer and artist team come in. They, they want to change the costumes of the X-Men, you know, 
or they want to make this character look a little older or younger, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like, I don't see why this matters, you know? Well, um, as of four hours ago, Brian, Stan Lee weighed in on this subject. Excellent. Um, his official word when he heard that Zendaya will be playing, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, apparently they're not going to call her Mary Jane. She's going to be called Michelle. See, that's, that's what it, it was saying is that she was being cast for a character named Michelle, but then the rumor started popping up that she might be Mary Jane. And that's when people flipped out. Right. So hmm. what, what does he say though? I'm just, hey, he says, uh, if she is, is as good as an actress as I hear she is, I think it'll be absolutely wonderful. Lee said to an interview with Post Media, mm-hmm. the Spider-Man co-creator went on to note that he had no problem with characters being changed when adapted to film, citing the ethnicity change in the Kingpin in the Daredevil movie as a great example of why it's not an issue. Or Nick Fury. Or Nick Fury. Mm-hmm. The color of your skin doesn't matter. The religion doesn't matter, Lee added, driving home the point that the color of an actor's skin isn't important. All that matters is that they are the right person for the role. Mm-hmm. I agree. And that, and that guy is like 103 years old. Well, and he co-created Spider-Man. And he, yeah, exactly. You know, like, like he, he should be the, the like if he, Stanley don't care. All right, we're good. Right. Exactly. You know, and Ugh. one of the best, <laughs> I saw a great Twitter post about this that was like to all the white people, uh, bitching about Mary Jane. Um, he's like, how about this? And he just, there's like all these pictures of, uh, characters that have been whitewashed in movies, you know? Right. And I just laughed and laughed when I saw that because I'm like, they're totally right. All these characters that should have been played by people of that race or whatever, and they aren't. They they cast a white person instead. You know, exactly. it's like, come on. Yeah. And again, let them tell this story if they want to. You know, it's like so many people took to defending Jared Leto as Joker and how weird and different it looks to some people. And they were like, well, let them tell this story. It's their interpretation. Well, this is this interpretation of it. You know, why, why can't, why couldn't Mary Jane be black? Why not? Why couldn't, are you saying that Peter Parker couldn't grow up next to an attractive, you know, black girl that became his girlfriend? That seems very possible in the world we live in, you know? No, 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 Brian, our superheroes don't mix races. Oh, <laughs> oh. now I will say this. Ugh, My so biggest terrible. thing is this. Yes. If you're Sony and you were like, you know, we're going to change the race of a character. Why? And this has to do with Marvel too, I guess. But why isn't Miles Morales Spider-Man then? Agreed. That was my very first thing that popped into my head is it's like, well, and I'm not saying because she's black. I'm just saying if you're going to be okay with changing the race of characters, why not put the character who is currently Spider-Man in the Spider-Man yeah. movie? There's this guy. His name's Donald Glover. <sighs> He's already said he'd love to be Spider Man. He'd be awesome. Although too. I hear they're they're maybe tagging him to be young Lando in the Han Solo movie. I would be totally okay with that too. Yeah. I think he'd be great. I actually think he's getting to the point though that uh he might be getting too old for Spider Man. Because they like to keep Spider Man younger. And yeah. Not fair that enough. Donald Glover's old, but he's starting to look a little more thirty, you know, range. So Right. Yeah. I'd it's still terrible. think he'd be great. But, you know, anyway, I, you know, this, it, it's just ridiculous. I just, every time a character gets changed and stuff, like, I get it. People don't like when their, their stuff has been changed. You know, I totally get it. And like for the movies, I get it even less though. In the comics, I get it a little more because, you know, a lot of people are like, well, hey, you know, it's been this way for all these years. And there's other people that so will go back and reread that stuff if you loved it so much. It's like, but now I can't read anything new with this or that, you know, so I get it. But, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't I, It just doesn't bother me that much. No, exactly. I don't know. There, there's some things in comics and movies that bug me. This one, I don't know why. It just doesn't. And again, you know, I had to talk with Fluffy Bunny Ash about it. And I was like, you know, maybe it's because I'm not a redhead fan. Like, I'm not like, you know, all about redheads the way it's kind of become like hip to do that. So, Brian, you don't like Mondays on Imager? No, no. <laughs> Redhead Mondays? What? Uh, no, I guess what? not. I guess not. Then <laughs> the only Monday I recognize is uh, was it Unfollow Monday or whatever that Patrice used to do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. God damn it, I miss Patrice. Oh yeah, uh, it, it is confirmed that uh, Lucas or whatever that the directors and whatever are their first choice for young Lando is Donald Glover. Uh, I think he'd be awesome. I really yeah. do. I think I think he would crush that role. Yes, for sure. Because he's got you know 
you because you got to be a little smooth and a little goofy and you know be willing to you know uh be an action guy and i, I think he's oh that i've heard gonna say stab your best friend in the back mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> wait <laughs> also god that. damn you lando also that <laughs> this is the worst dinner ever and then Peter there and then go on to promote colt 45 well, of course. Because Lando did that, right? <laughs> and Hunt Predator. <laughs> right, naturally. Yeah. All right, enough of this shit. Unsuccessfully though. Hunt Predator. Yeah, Way to go. Yeah, he certainly was not successful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, do you have anything you want to jump in with? Or I got like two more things here, so whichever. Um, I'm just going to jump in with, I feel the delicious cool breezes of the air conditioner right now. Apparently my wife caved. <laughs> Hurrah! Hurrah! Hurrah for air conditioning. Good news, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor Farnsworth. Yeah, he does what he can. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I, I don't. Right. I mean, we got Q to W, of course. Oh, no, we'll get to that. Oh, All right. okay. I didn't know you had more uh, lined up. I sir. Actually, I have a, a thing here that's based on a snap of yours. Uh, really? Actually, yeah. Uh, the other day, because as soon as I saw it, I was like, what? And uh, this, Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. The story's a little old, but as soon as I saw this, I was like, Jesus Christ, why? And, and mainly because, and I'm doing all this lead, I know I can just tell what it is, but like when I look this up on like Reddit and other things, people are excited about this. Right. And the story is that Labatt Blue introduced Zubaz-themed uh, beer cans. Like, Tony posted a picture of a billboard and was just, I don't remember your caption, but it was just Just like, really? (laughs) Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Like, who the hell wants? And I did see there was a great picture somewhere that was like, I don't remember if it's on this one, the Bro Bible page that I have here. Yeah, that says like, Gronk is probably the happiest man in the world or something like that. Um, That's pretty funny. Because of pictures he's, you know, posted with Zubaz like crazy. But I was like, oh, come on. Really? Why? What? Why would you buy can- – and, like, the funny part is that they're, like – they're, like, oh, they're collectible. And I actually saw on – um when I was looking the story up, there's – you know how you'll see, like, previews for eBay or whatever. And I clicked on one of them, and somebody was, like, they're really hard to find and super collectible. I'm, like, stop it. Like, come the on. Zubaz or the, the Labatt the, shit? The Labatt cans because there's okay. different ones, you know. I don't know. I didn't catch if they're themed by, um like, sports teams in the area, but they've got a variety of cans. Um, cause I'm looking at them right now and I see three, four, five, six, there's seven in this picture. Right. And I was like, oh, come on. Really? You know? Yeah. They're, they're, they're sports team. Cause I'm okay. looking, cause of course people are selling them on eBay. Yeah, of course. So I could get a Pittsburgh <laughs> used. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a funny. Zuba, a Zubaz Pittsburgh Steelers black and gold can for $9 and 25 cents. Or you could go buy a 12 of it yourself, but. Because generally um, they put the teams in the markets. I mean, I guess if you lived in California and you wanted a Steelers one, you're bumming. But you know, yeah. If seriously though, if you live anywhere and you're like, I have to get those, you need to reevaluate yourself. Uh, oh, ho- hold on. Okay. There's 23 people watching this auction. <laughs> okay. For an empty fucking beer can <laughs> and there's of course there's more to 10 available because the guy probably just plowed through all of them <laughs> yeah he bought like a 30 and he's just like i'm making my ebay money <laughs> are you shit okay here's here's something what that i don't there is no like team logos on these cans they're just look like a pair of zubaz pants and they're in, the team, in, colors. in their colors yeah so I'd at least understand it if it was like Pittsburgh Steelers logo on, say, one side of the can. You know, it says a little bad on the other, but you know, like Pittsburgh Steelers logo or something, or even if it just said Steelers or Stillers and then had, you know, black and black and yellow, you know, the Zubas pants. Black and yellow, black and yellow. You know, that I would understand because, like, well, I guess, you know, Steelers collectors were, but they're just black and yellow ones. They could be anything. Hell, the elementary school we went to. You know, it was black and yellow. I mean, we should go around there and see if anyone wants to buy any. <laughs> yeah, the, how great that we would show up with the black and yellow Zubaz bl- Labatt blue cans if we could find them, Brian. Sure, you're right. They are super collectible. And just get fucking plowed at a mm-hmm. Jack and Yellow Jackets game. <laughs> yeah. Woo, Team Spirit. I got my black and yellow can. We need black and yellow Zubaz, too. Obviously. I mean, yeah, I've already sure. got mine. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
this is the the article starts by saying shut up and take my money but no sir no like i shan't <laughs> this is no i shall keep my money on this one <sighs> now i got i i kind of appreciate the fact that zubaz no, I don't like that. Never mind. <laughs> I, I was going to her website and on like, if you Google Zubaz and then go to click on her website, it says embrace the awesome, which I kind of like. I'm like, Oh, that's kind of, that entertains me. Yeah. And then uh, until I went to her website and it's a picture of like a, a, gr- a bunch of groomsmen in their tuxes and vests and says, unleash your inner crazy and they're jumping in the air. It's like, Hey, no. go fuck yourself. Yeah. You're right out. You're right out. Ugh, so. Although these Zubaz leggings this chick's wearing. Slow down, <laughs> slow down. That, really that's cute. an advancement, at least. Yeah. Those fucking Zubaz pants from the... God, those were horrible. Oh Just, my god, they're expensive, too. Yeah. They're like 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah. What? Dude, the thing was, like... Do you know what stands out to me about them is, like, how much you used to see, like, the pro wrestlers in their downtime would be wearing, rocking those in their fanny packs, you know? Right. Oh, man. Well, because when you have fucking ogre thighs, I get it. Yeah, right? You know? Yeah, they, and because they were popular amongst athletes and wrestlers and, you know, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? Guys at the gym, basically, you know? No, they do have some solid colors at the bottom here. Okay. Like, they just have black Zuba. And I might wear those, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose? No, no, I was about to say, if I ever bought a pair of Zubaz... They yeah. would have to be some insane. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you wearing an all pair, all, all black pair. Just it's like, oh, check out my Zubaz, and it's like, okay. Oh, here you go. Like these fluorescent yellow ones. There you go. It looks like a piece of fruit stripe gum. <laughs> They're on special for twenty dollars right now. There you Perfect. go, Tony. Boom. Nice. All right. Enough. Enough about Zubaz, though. Fuck those uh, guys. Elastic waist with drawstring. Sixty forty. Kali poly. Kali poly. Good. Boy. Cotton poly <laughs> blend. Kali <Collie> poly. <laughs> yes, goddamn Kali poly. I'm going to use Kali fur. Yeah. Not, not cauliflower. Cauliflower. Kali fla- I can't even say it now. Kali right? poly. Jeez. Yeah, fuck you, bro. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. Now, for stretchy pants, do you really need a size chart? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Obviously. (laughs) What is there, small and everyone else or what? Yeah, basically. Small, most, and then really big. God, I can't believe these things are still a thing. Oh, I know. I'm clicking on the Zubaz Nation link here. It's probably a terrible idea. Because you're joining, right? (laughs) You know, as a goof, I might. You know, if I had more money, you'd own a pair of Zubaz soon. (laughs) I'd fucking buy you a pair for sure. Like, I got you some workout pants. (laughs) So, Brian, the people you would expect to be wearing Zubaz are all wearing Zubaz on this Zubaz Nation. Yeah, it does not surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. You know what my favorite use of them has been? There's a, a wrestling tag team. It's Christopher Daniels and um, oh, I can't think of the guy's first name. It's like Tazarian, I think, is his last name. And right. uh, they used to come out when they were with uh, TNA. They used to do like a throwback Thursday or something like that. And, you know, like one time they came out dressed like the Road Warriors. One time they came out in like Zuba's pants and, and, um, uh, uh, fanny packs and stuff like that. And it, it was hilarious. Like, that's pretty cool. They did a whole gimmick around it, basically. And it was great. And, uh, so that I'll give them credit for that. But otherwise, the, every pair of these pants should be set on fire immediately. <laughs> yes, exactly. Even if people are in them. <laughs> Especially if people are in Especially them. Especially if people are in them. You're right. So, all right. So, you know, I forgot to mention. Um, so this week I started watching. Um, did you watch on Netflix? They had a show on there called Sense8. No, I haven't. I've heard good things about it. Yeah. So I have I, not I, watched it. There's uh, 12 episodes. I, I watched that over the last week. And it the first episode I was like, eh, I don't know. You know? And, you know, of course I was like, well, I'll watch one more because – you know, whatever. So it's, you watch the second episode and I was like, and there's, I forgot what happened, but there's something that happened and I was like, all right, I'm in, you know, and ended up watching the whole thing. It was a really interesting show. It's weird, but it's really interesting because it's these characters that can kind of, they're all like connected via a, uh, like a consciousness almost. And they can kind of visit each other within their brains and stuff. And, hmm. you know, it, it, it's a really interestingly done show. Um, right. 
So, yeah, I, I, I dug it, though. It was kind of cool. So it has the Brian Stewart stamp of approval is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, it's, I, it's a little weird. It's by the uh, Wachowskis, you know, the, the Matrix people. Right. So it's a little odd. But it was uh, some of the writing or whatever was done by J. Michael Straczynski, who you may oh, remember okay. from Babylon 5, or if you're a comics fan, you remember Rising Stars. Right, yes. Um, he wrote uh, some of it. It was really, like I said, it was a really different and uh, kind of interesting show. So, well, I'm, we've been, you know, team Netflix lately, so yeah. I, I might have to check that out. Yeah, me too. I've been just crushing stuff. So, all right, and I got one last thing here, and then we can move into the Q of the W stuff, I guess. And uh, the last thing I got here is: Did you see the video of um, D. Snyder doing the "We're not going to take it"? To, no, like, there's no, no, no. There's just there's a dude playing piano. And he's like singing it like lower, like he's you know it's not done to rock music, it's done to like a piano, and it's he did it for as much as I can't stand Chris Angel, but Chris Angel's uh, charity, Mind Freak. So he did it for you know it's, it's it, I think it's a uh, uh, the charity helps uh, kids that have uh, cancer and such, and basically you know the video shows you facts about. You know, how cancer, you know, is like the number two killer of kids and or whatever and stuff like that through the thing. It sounds like a real downer. Well, yeah, it is. But, you know, that's what it's I bring. No to gusher the, core. Video. No, it's what I bring to the podcast, Tony. You know, we're getting towards the end. <laughs> the you gusher know? core? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Well, landing gear. You're right. Yeah, landing gear. Landing gear. Right. Um. Anyway, I thought it was just, you know, I mean, if you dig the song, it's it's just kind of a, you know, it's a little different version of the song. It's probably been done before by him, but, you know. So it's like a, uh, just like a toned down version of the, we're not going to take it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd play it, but I don't think it comes through to you. So. Oh, uh, well, that, that Peter Parker thing sure did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about that, but, uh, <laughs> here, all right then. I'll refresh the video. I'll go. I'm just, it's going to be in the song when I hit play though, because I don't want to go all the way to the beginning. All right. Fair ready? Enough. All right. So here, I'll play a little bit here real quick. All right. All right, I lied. We've got the right to choose it. There ain't no way we'll lose it. This is our life. This is our song. All right, I don't want to play a whole lot because, you know, (laughs) reasons, but... (laughs) Right. But anyways, you know, it's like I said, I thought it was kind of an, it, it made sense to take it down to, you know, take it down a little bit for the cause and stuff. I just thought, you know, it's cool that, uh, D. Snyder's like, hey, I'm going to go do this. See, I thought it was going to be something awful. Like, no, no, actually. D. Snyder's trying to perform it and he's, you know, having a breakdown on stage. No, he sounds. Like Johnny Depp or something. No, or... no, no. And he sounds great, like, through the song. Like, you know, I mean, it's not live or anything, but it's, you know, like, it, he still sounds, Sounds pretty good singing his own song, so that's always yeah, a bonus. For it a is always a bonus. Yeah, you know. So anyway, I mean, I thought he. I mean, I don't know if you remember Strange Land, that oh, goofy Jesus. horror movie. Yeah, that was weird. But yeah. he, he, there was a couple songs he did on the soundtrack that he killed it on. Yeah, I, that was one. I used to buy soundtracks just because I was like, oh look, it's a nice compilation of bands I like. Well, also a lot of times those soundtracks had original stuff on them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, I, yeah, I was a Johnny soundtrack over yeah. here. Yep, and, I did too. And, uh, yeah, he killed it on a couple of those songs. Yeah, I'll give you that. I, that movie was, I did not care for the movie, but the soundtrack had some interesting stuff yeah. on it. If you step on that power strip, I will annihilate you. <laughs> There's Tony's t-shirt of the week. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Use that as a ringtone, yeah, bitches. that's great. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, anyway, I, like I said, I, you know, I thought it was kind of a, an interesting thing. There's a little landing gear for the week, if you will. It is, I will say this, if you watch the video, um, uh, staring at D. Snyder is not necessarily something that I recommend. And, uh, cause he kind of looks goofy even when he's trying to be all serious in the video. But, uh, we don't have that when you're teased hair and blush and lipstick on. No, no, no. He's in like <laughs> all white and his hair's pulled back and, you know. Um, he's, oh, he, he's oh, looking so he's classy. Like, like got a nice dress on. Yeah, dude, he's out in the middle of like a desert. There's the, him and this dude that starts the video. He walks up and this other guy walks up and sits down at a piano. 
and D Snyder stands there, you know, and then at different points, you know, of course the wind blows. So his shirt, he has a white button down, but then it has a white beater under a white wife beater underneath it. So, you know, the wind blows it a little bit and it's like, yeah, it's a little eighties flair there for you. But if, if there's any justice in the world, do piano players start playing and D would come out in a cocktail dress, like he's in a lounge. <laughs> that would be awesome. And he just <laughs> lays across the piano. Yeah. This not really appropriate for this cause, but well, no, but I'm, I'm with just, you though. I'm with yeah, you for sure. Yeah. Uh, if he had the opportunity, it wouldn't shock me if he did do something like that. Cause you know, whatever. F- fucking hilarious. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's what I got for the week. Beautiful. Boom. Boom. Well, Brian, Q W time. Yeah. Q and W. Man, that's a great sound drop. Wouldn't I really need to do some sort of sound yeah. drop for it. Now, do we need a sound drop for everything? Yes. Okay. Do you know what though? Knowledge gong. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Yeah. What's what's up? I I gotta tell you, man. I'm I'm not liking the fact that we're this far into a show, and I there's something I haven't heard this week. Oh yeah! There we go. Now I'm back in. You You're know, better now. I feel like the Zuba story was a good spot for a Macho Man drop. <laughs> yeah, it really was. <laughs> Even I though mean, he wasn't necessarily known for wearing their product, it's just you know not not when he's on stage, but in his yeah. private life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like if he could right now go to Zubaz.com. More seductive than sex. Right. Right. That's all he'd be staring well, at is all the no, 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 delicious no. Zubas. After he was done staring at saltylanguage.com, of course. Well, of course, yeah. of course. Right. Then he'd go to, he'd click the banner to Amazon and buy a Zubas through Amazon. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you want to nestle your genitals in? Uh, but tiger stripe Zubas. Oh, I thought you were going that, back to the punji pit. That 60 40 Kali Poly blend. <laughs> Damn Kali Poly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just a weird pronunciation for somebody in California that likes to have multiple people in a relationship? Maybe, yeah. It's, they're, they're in the dogs and multiple people. Wait a minute. <laughs> like they had a weird obsession of Lassie. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's that's yeah. a whole different, man, you exactly. took it a different way. I don't think I like this anymore. Yeah. All right, so cue the W. Cue the W. Last week we asked you guys, if you could address the world of one sentence, what would you say? Face page. Actually, I actually have a decent amount of money, old face page here. Good, because I have very few. Uh, I got Dylan Zeman, which I'm not 100% sure. He must be from a podcast, I'm sure, but I'm I, not ringing a bell. Uh, actually, I um, I knew him from Twitter. Maybe that's it then. So, hmm. so Dylan here, he says, the beauty isn't in the perfection, it's in the creation. Hmm. Deep thoughts. It is, it is. You got uh, our pal FRJ, who's uh, going to be lost to the either when he's, now he's playing WoW. It's true. So the crew, oh, well, I don't have, oh, I do. Oh. The cream of the crop. Nice. The cream of the crop rises to the top. Oh, see, if I would have known that was there, I wouldn't have done the, the Macho Man bit. Right, right. It's all right. Uh, you got Scott from the comic book roast. Mm-hmm. He just says, you make me sick. <laughs> I like it. I, yeah. I'm a big fan. Like if, if somebody, like a president or whatever just got up in front of everybody, it was like, you people make me sick. <laughs> and just walked away. <laughs> yeah. Just like a straight heel, you know, uh, doing a promo in the middle of a wrestling ring, you know, pointing around at the crowd. You people make me sick. <laughs> yeah. It'd be perfect. Like back in the day when Bobby the Brain Heenan used to do that stuff, you know. Uh, you got Big Dev here, the uh, you know polar of the plug on Wicked Radio. <laughs> Says you are the worst. <laughs> See, it's along the same lines. <laughs> it's along the same lines. That's why I skipped that one. Yeah, and, and the last one. This one could be my favorite of the face page ones, mm-hmm. as long as he's referencing what I think he is. Okay, it's Matthew McDonough from Passers by Podcast. He says, "Can you dig it?" But I read it as, can you dig it from Warriors? Well, that's the only place he should be referencing it from. Because if he's making a Booker T reference, then he deserves a slap across the face the next time we see him. Yeah, and a spin rooney And a spin rooney You're right. Also, but, you yeah, have to if say he's sucka. quoting Cyrus from Warriors, yeah. thank you. I, he has to be. Cause, I would hope so. I mean, if not, if not, then he should have had sucka at the end of it, first of all. This again, is very true. If it was Booker that, T, it would say sucka. But yeah. Yeah. I tried to say that as white as possible. Uh you know. So uh yeah, is that all the Facebook ones? That's what we got on the old right. face page. So let's check the Twitter. Nothing. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Check check Twitter one more time. Okay, I'll, hey, I'll hit refresh. Uh let's see here. Twitter. 
That's yep. a that's a good one. Get up in front of people and just play the cricket sound. <laughs> and just stare at them. Yeah. The best Me thing you mug. could do, really, the best thing you could do is just <clears throat> look around the room, make eye contact with each person as you're sensually licking your lips. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> just as awkward as possible. Um, I agree. Speaking of awkward, uh, Cheeto sent in. Um, his was, does Marcellus Wallace look like a bitch? That's pretty great. Mm-hmm. Now the question is, will does he get the opportunity with the follow up? Yeah, because is this, ro- is this roast battle rules? Does he get a rebuttal? I, I feel like he needs to because you need to, you know, like you can't just hear half of that quote. You have That's to true. do the whole thing, you know. Yeah, because if you don't do the, then why are you trying to fuck him like one? It just, you know, it feels like you, you, you know, I don't know. It just feels so incomplete, you know. But that's all right. That's, that'd be perfect in negotiations. Does America <laughs> look like a bitch? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Why try to fuck it like one? Yeah. <laughs> that'd be perfect. Bill Pullman's negotiating with aliens in yeah. Independence Day. <laughs> Does America look like a bitch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did the arms. No, it was great. <laughs> it made it for me. And oh, nobody else. Half time, I think we should do video just for dumb shit like that. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, when I get my T Rex costume, that'll be our first vi- live podcast. Oh my god, that'd be so fun. I would. You know, well, you know, I would do it too, as long as I Dude. can get some sort of cooling devices on me. Dude, you dress up as a T Rex. Mm-hmm. I'll dress up as the uh, Australian security guy from Jurassic Park. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> With his, with his Bushman hat and his nutters on. <laughs> oh, that was what I was going to wear, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a T-Rex as a security guy. Yes. The part. That's going to be my gimmick. I'm going to be the T-Rex, and I'm going to dress up as other people. <laughs> Alternate universe Jurassic Park. It's run by dinosaurs. People escape. <laughs> <laughs> That's way less. Well, I guess the people would have to be armed because they have to be dangerous. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Be like, it's, like, rah, rah, rah. it's subtitled clever girl <laughs> yeah because she just immediately turns the doorknob yeah <laughs> like she doesn't even stop and think about it she just turns it because it's a doorknob you know doorknob. yeah <laughs> and they're mesmerized. Are like fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> actually it's not even a doorknob it's those latch you know those long levered ones that you push down Right. That way they wouldn't have to have an opposable thumb to turn oh, it, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's true. We yeah. gotta think dinosaur science. Right. They're thinking or something like that. They're thinking we can't get around it or whatever. Cause like, ha, we didn't use the, their clever doorknobs. <laughs> the girls just like pushes down on it. It's like their, their clumsy lack of claws. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that cause I was actually thinking the other day about how I'd love to have the T-Rex, uh, costume and then cosplay in the T-Rex costume. I, this is a hilarious idea. Right? Like, it, but I don't have the money or the want to make costumes, but it would just be really funny that that's my gimmick is I go to these cons in the T-Rex costume. Cosplaying. As, as something else. As yeah. something else. Now, the best one would be when I'm a T-Rex cosplaying is like a raptor. That'll be all sorts of fun. You know, cause you just have like a mask on the front and then different claw gloves or something. <laughs> Or when I'm the Incredible Hulk, I have, you know those masks you see at like Target or whatever. Right. <laughs> just put one of those on the front in the Hulk hands. <laughs> yeah, purple pants of your tail yeah, coming out of it. Obviously, right. And well, then I have to be careful because I don't want people thinking I'm the lizard. You know. Oh, good point. But you're right. Obviously, I'd be like, you know, if they're like, "What are you, the lizard?" I'd be like, "Hulk hands, duh." You know. Or even better, he goes Bruce Banner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's the I'll just go as humans. Like my whole cosplay. Goat. Yeah, my all my cosplay will be humans. Like I'll go as Peter Parker. I'll go yeah. as you know yeah. Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wayne, yeah, exactly. Paul Kent. Yep, yep. Doctor Doom, you know, without the mask. Um yeah. wait, no. I love this idea of dinosaurs cosplay. I need a female, then we can do uh Martha and uh um Thomas Wayne, because that'd be awesome. <laughs> like get a little kid, put him in a T Rex, dude. <laughs> Have him grieving us. This is the shit. That would man. be great. I'm telling you, the best thing ever. Boom, nailed it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The best thing this week or whatever. I forgot what they call it on Comics Roast now. Best thing ever. Best thing yeah. ever. Okay, so I was right when I did the boom yeah. and nailed it. All right. Oh man. So yeah, that's that's all I got for the Q the W. Now that I've train wrecked that. Well, it's a short week. 
That's and okay. you can never train wreck with Jurassic Park cosplay. You're right. Whenever Jurassic I... cosplay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. I was trying to think of something better. No, I got, I got nothing. Yeah. Cretaceous cosplay. That, just stop. You're hurting. All right. you're, you're just killing everybody. <laughs> everybody. Fine. Well, you had a. Uh, you, you mentioned on one of your most recent uh, crazy life stuff. You had a Q to W. Oh yeah. About like storytelling versus stand up. Yes. Right. Right. What What would you rather do? Mm-hmm. So why don't we just go with that, okay. my friend? Yeah, that's fine with me. I mean, I gave my answer, but uh, and I actually told you before what mine is. It, it, the question is kind of, and we'll figure out the exact wording, I guess, but it was, you know, we've talked about the podcast Risk, where people get up and tell very intimate stories. So the question basically is, would you rather give up, get up in front of a crowd and give that kind of a, a, a presentation, or would you rather get up and do stand-up comedy? Right. And we'll go ahead and get, you know, we'll pretend that most of you are funny. So, <laughs> you know, so the Too question rough. is, wh- which would you rather do? You know, um, and my answer is I'd rather tell the story um, because, first of all, I, I, I don't give a shit. I tell shit about me all the time. I'm pretty open about most stuff. Um, right. But also, I think in my head, the crowd is more geared to be supportive, whereas you never know with a comedy crowd, uh, especially if you're doing like an open mic, which is, you know, essentially what's going on here. Um, yes. So I think the storytelling for me is I'm walking more, I'm, there's more, more chance I'm walking into a safe environment. Even if I tell something horrific in front of people, they're probably like, well, let's see where this goes, you know, before they start like throwing tables at me or something. Right. So that's my thought process. I like your thought process. Yeah. I, I actually have a rough one, a tough time with this one because some of my favorite standups are storytellers. Absolutely. And that, that was the other side of it was I kind of thought that way. But again, it's more of like the concept would be you go to an open mic to tell jokes, even if they're stories, you're going to be funny versus just a storytelling where you could kind of do whatever you want with your story. Right. You know? See, I, I think I'd be more inclined to go do like stand up. Yeah. Because of storytelling, that means I actually have to, you know, get in touch with my feelings and not hide behind a funny like I like to do. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you wouldn't have to. I mean, you can diffuse it, you know, I mean, because I'm like risk. There's been quite a few. There's a lot of funny stories. Yeah. But you're right. I I get what you're saying, though. (laughs) Damn you and your monkey brain. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to have to access those dead vaults I locked away. <laughs> uh, that's good. No, that's, that's, I mean, I, I, that's more my style anyway. Because, I mean, when it was like you, Tate, and I, I, I really enjoyed just sniping in funny shit and all that, you know? Right. I, mean, I don't think I'm more inclined to uh, just take center stage and. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. my thing is I'd, I'd be nervous as hell for either, you know, like yeah. there's, well, this is true. I mean, yeah. I'd be like near shit in my pants either way, but I think it's, you know, I, I the other thing is I, I think with like stories and it, this works both. I mean, it's, it's kind of arguing it's splitting hairs really because they're both, you could kind of temper your answer however you need it to fit you, you know, and you're yeah. right and you're totally right because they both work the same way. Cause you can go tell a funny story. You know, people laugh, they enjoy whatever, or you could go tell, you know, funny jokes or depressing jokes instead of telling a depressing story. Maybe, you, you know, this is true. So you can kind of work it however you need to. But, uh, you know, I'm with you. It, it's, you know, once I'm up there and start talking, I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Let's, you know. Well, like interesting question for you here. Well, not interesting, but like, for instance, say we did salty language live on stage yeah, somewhere. Right. Would you be comfortable doing that? Absolutely not. <laughs> right? Cause I, cause I mean, it's yeah. just like, it'd be just doing what we're doing here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and just in front of people, which well, is weird. And I think there's the difference is I've seen some, uh, live podcasts or, or whatever, and they'll look at each other when they do the show. Right. And I've seen some where they look at the crowd. I think if I was just looking at you the whole time, it would just be me talking to you and people could just infer what they want from it, you know. But if I have to look out at, say, you know, uh, the millions and millions of our fans. (laughs) But, you know, if I had to look out at, like, a crowded room of people there to listen to us or whatever, I'd be or to watch us, I'd be like, uh, (laughs) you know. I'd be just like, it's not like a uh, fucking Normandy medic. 
stay with me. Stay with me, Brian. Look yeah. at me. Look at me. <laughs> right. I, I, I mean, honestly, what would probably happen is I would just start hammering beers or bourbons until I was comfortable. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> like, sir, we don't have any more whiskey. I'll tell you when I've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sir, sir, you're going to have to leave. Your, your show is over an hour ago. <laughs> you know what? Fuck you. you. Fuck you. I can drive myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, you know, realistically, it's something I would really like to do. Like whenever I hear people doing like risk, it's something that I always, because of my anxieties and, right. and depression and stuff, it's something that if I had a story that I thought would be really good for that, I think it would be an excellent um, way to really it, it, force myself into an uncomfortable spot for the good of myself. Yeah, so that's that you is know? a growing, yeah, type thing. Right? Would I ever yep. do it? Yeah, probably not. But Fatal, right? <laughs> yeah. Unless we do like a live podcast at some point, if we got to a point that we were doing this, I'd probably be more like if you gave this as a third option, I would take this. Right. Because I'm confident in it. I'm comfortable with it. And it's talking to you, you know, so I'm just like worst case scenario. If we're not getting anything from the crowd, we just talk to each other and make each other laugh. Same as if we're hanging out with anyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, cause we've been in groups where they're not having any of our monkey shines and we just entertain ourselves. So yeah, we're like, ah, oh, we'll get back over here to just jerking each other off then. <laughs> That's basically okay. what we're doing. Right. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys don't know what's funny, man. <laughs> Fucking gag suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, you're in a library. Could you please keep it down? <laughs> I'll drink where I want to drink. <laughs> like we never said anything about that at, at all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm curious to hear people's uh, reasons. Because, like I said, I think you could really argue either side. And you're essentially making the same argument, you know? Right. Yeah, it's true. But I still am curious why people would favor one over the other. You know. I would also be curious to hear that. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. All right. So, yeah, that's all I got. You got anything else? No, nah, man, that's about it. All right, cool. Let's wrap this up then. Uh, as always, we are like, hey, kids, go to SaltyLanguage.com and check out all the links, pictures, videos, uh, I, whatever else Tony puts up there for your, you know, your pleasure. Um, you know, and if you swing, you know, again, we always ask if you're going to uh, buy anything from Amazon, swing by the site first, click on the Amazon banner and then just shop as normal. It doesn't Don't cost forget. You. What? Brian. What? Coupon code salty language. Everything will be full price still. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sweet. That's a good, that's good. Uh, yeah, it doesn't cost you anything extra, you know, just a couple extra clicks, but, uh, they help us out a little bit, you know, a little bit, a little bit, a little uh, piece of the action every like. Six to eight months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to just toss some coin our way, um, you know, you can become a Patreon subscriber. Uh, there's a link right there, too. Again, I'll mention, uh, if you have a web block um, thing on your, your browser, it may block those things, so you'd have to disable it to do it. But all, all we're asking is if you would. You know, we understand. We understand if you can't. Exactly. No, um... So, and then also while you're there, you know, at the bottom of the page, Tony's conveniently listed the podcast networks that we're part of, including, you know, our fallen brethren that were pouring, pouring some out of our 44, uh, the Wicked Radio Network and Pod Gods Network. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but we're also part of Tangent Bound Network. They're not a bunch of bums giving up on everybody. No, I'm kidding. Hey, oh no. I'm kidding. Stay the course. <laughs> Um, we're also part of the Geek Life Radio, whatnot. We're part of, uh, I've got myself all thrown off now. Me too, because I've been like, I think there's just the one I'm forgetting. Planning side effects and all that. Right. I know for sure we're part of. Watch your back. Danger. Shit, one more time. Watch your back. Remix. <laughs> Remix. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. 
Danger, Danger, Danger. It's their new network, Danger. <laughs> yes, Danger. Now it's a oh. warning. It's a warning to a guy. His name is Danger, and <laughs> Mystical's like Danger. Watch yourself. <laughs> All right, the shake your ass part is a little weird, but. <laughs> Oh, that's true. It's just because, you know, Mystical's in some weird shit. Well, naturally. <laughs> that's what happens when you wear that Kali Poly blend stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Goddamn Kali Poly. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Ah, oh, jeez. I forgot where I was at. Oh, uh, if you want to contact the show, you know, like if you want to be part of the Dude Mountain Pick'em League, uh, you can hit us up at uh, saltylanguage at gmail.com. Uh, just send me your email address and I can fire it back to you. Or you can... Uh, Send me a message or us a message on the tweets at uh, salty underscore language. Uh, I can be found at Stunami. Uh, I am at Monotony. Sorry. Distracted by something real quick. Kali Poly, right? Yeah. Kali Poly. <laughs> yeah, I am at uh, I am at Monotony. And then if you want to check out other nonsense, you do the old salty underscore language on the Snapchat. And I really should when we go out, make sure I save those stories yeah. for future you know, yeah, whatever. Probably a good idea. Uh, yeah. You can follow me on Snapchat at uh, Ninjitsu. Ninjitsu. Yeah. And uh, what am I forgetting here? I'm really forgetting something, Tony. <sighs> the old plugola. Oh, uh, you can find us, uh, the show, on YouTube if you want to listen to us that way. Um, each week, uh, actually around the same time I post the show to iTunes and Stitcher, it's also going up on uh, uh, YouTube. So if you can't access the other stuff, you can get YouTube. Boom, we got you covered. We got you covered. Also, if you're looking at the YouTube, which is Salty Language Pod, right? Yes. Yeah. If you're uh, looking at that, uh, don't forget, first of all, subscribe. I mean, why wouldn't you subscribe, right? I don't know. What are you, asshole? Yeah. And second of all, uh, Tony's got some awesome uh, best ofs up there. So, you know, they're perfect for sharing with friends who may not be familiar with Salty Language. Wink, right? wink, nudge, nudge. Pass it along to your friends mm -hmm. and your enemies. Right. Or and your frenemies. Sure. I hate, I really hate that word, by Me the way. Me too. I'm with you 100%. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm hangry. You're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Damn, Tony. Sorry. <laughs> Tony's just unleashing here at the end. His, his punji pit runneth over. Um, uh, let's see. What else? Man, I'm just. I'm just a mess with the plugs tonight. I can't think of it. Anyway, you have you have an hour podcast after this? Oh, it's gonna be a mess. Good luck to you, sir. <laughs> a mess. All right, let me pull up my thing. Um, yeah, I'm just totally just blur here. Uh, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. That's that's good enough with the with the links. I think that's everything anyway. So if you got something? Go to saltylanguage.com. I'm sure it's there. Also that, yeah, or send us a message and say, hey, you forgot this. We, you know, I need whatever. You know, exactly a gentle Boom. hug. Kisses. Gentle hug. Exactly. Tony will send you a Snapchat of, you know, gentle kisses if you need him to. Gentle, soothing kisses. <laughs> maybe a, like a, the bee filter on or something. Oh, God damn it. Well, at least it won't be the flower crown one. Or you know the, what I'm not a fan of? Or the Just real one. quick. I know we're trying to wrap this shit up. Right. But there's a couple people I follow on Snapchat that mm -hmm. yeah, generally are entertaining. Yeah. With the exception of they use filters as characters. Oh, geez, really? It's like, hey, what's up? It's B-Man. It's like, ah. Oh. <sighs> and then you, and you'll never, it looks like I'm, you know, angrily stabbing my phone with my finger, skipping through their shit. Well, it's because you are. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you know you can just swipe down, right? I mean. Well, yeah, I know. But eventually it'll go back to that. Oh, okay. I see what you're I'm saying. I'm just clearing the shit out. Yeah, okay. That's Although, don't get me wrong. Back in the day when we used to do more nonsense, like voices and shit, and we'd be, you know, celebrities, I was like, if I was using Snapchat then and I could do to make your own, like, face swap with a celebrity, mm -hmm. I would totally be doing that. I'd see, I, I don't feel like that's the same thing. It's um, not. Because they aren't going... Uh, hey, here's the Marilyn Monroe filter that they put up, or, or Madonna, that's what it was, where they, where you right. make your face look like Madonna. And if you were doing that, I'd be like, eh, really, dude? I don't know, you know, but. I mean, you remember that Arnold Schwarzenegger one I sent you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd be doing shit like that right. if we had a recurring character on our show like we used to have. Right, exactly. We, but we've kind of fallen away from that. Right, except for like Uncle Tickle. 
Yeah, that's every once in a while Uncle Tickle comes well, into play. Well, you can't let him around all the time. Plus, and, he's got to get back out of jail. <laughs> and granted, maybe I should Google like creepy old guy and find a good face to face swap. Maybe we'll do Uncle, Uncle Tickle show ups on Snapchat. Oh, that's the- <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying and Isn't it? it might be a good idea no, i like this yeah just you know advertise the show or whatever so all yeah. right well <clears throat> so uh yeah uh tony's about to leave for jamaica so uh i'm going to say until next week have a beer you'll be fine uh stay salty like the oceans right and remember push it to the max yeah <laughs>